The Monthly Review, established in 1949, is an independent socialist magazine published monthly in New York City. The publication remains the longest continuously published socialist magazine in the United States. The journal has an impact factor of 0 0.460. Topic: History. Topic: Establishment. Following the failure of the independent 1948 presidential campaign of Henry A. Wallace, two former supporters of the Wallace effort met at the farm in New Hampshire where one of them was living. The two men were literary scholar and Christian socialist F.O. Matty Matheson and Marxist economist Paul Sweezy, who were former colleagues at Harvard University. Matheson came into an inheritance after his father died in an automobile accident in California and had no pressing need for the money. Matheson made the offer to Sweezy to underwrite that magazine Sweezy and Leo Huberman were always talking about, committing the sum of $5,000 per year for three years. Matheson's funds made the launch of Monthly Review possible, although the amount of the seed money was reduced to $4,000 per year in the second and third years by the executors of Matheson's estate following his suicide in 1950. Although Matheson was the financial angel of the new publication, from the outset the editorial task was handled by Sweezy and his co thinker, the left wing popular writer Leo Huberman. The author of an array of books and pamphlets during the 1930s and early 1940s, the New York University-educated Huberman worked full-time on monthly review from its establishment until his death of a heart attack in 1968. Sweezy and Huberman were complementary figures guiding the publication, with Sweezy's theoretical bent and writing ability put to use for a majority of the editorial content, while Huberman took charge of the business and administrative aspects of the enterprise. Sweezy remained at home in New Hampshire, traveling down to the New York City once a month to read manuscripts, where Huberman conducted the day-to-day -day operations of the magazine along with his wife, Jerdy Huberman, and family friend Sybil Huntington May, briefly joining Sweezy and Huberman as a third founding editor of Monthly Review. Although not listed as such on the publication's masthead, was German émigré Otto Nathan 1893-1987. Although his time of editorial association with Mr. was short, Nathan was instrumental in obtaining what would become a seminal essay for the magazine, a lead piece for the debut May 1949 issue by physicist Albert Einstein entitled, Why Socialism? Another key contributor during the first 15 years of Mr. was economist Paul Barron, frequently considered as the third member of an editorial troika including Sweezy and Huberman. A tenured professor at Stanford University, Barron was one of a very few self-identified Marxists to teach economics at American universities during the Cold War period. Barron worked closely with Sweezy on a book regarded as a landmark in Marxist theory entitled Monopoly Capital. Although he died of a heart attack prior to the work's first publication in 1966, Monthly Review launched in 1949 with a circulation of just 450 copies, most of whom were personal acquaintances of either Huberman or Sweezy. The magazine's ideology and readership closely paralleled that of the independent Marxist weekly newspaper The National Guardian, established in 1948. Despite a conservative political climate in the United States, the magazine quickly reached a critical mass of subscribers, with its paid circulation rising to 2,500 in 1950 and to 6,000 in 1954. <laughs> <laughs> McCarthy period During the McCarthyism of the early 1950s, editors Paul Sweezy and Leo Huberman were targeted for subversive activities. Sweezy's case, tried by New Hampshire Attorney General, went all the way to the Supreme Court and became a seminal case on freedom of speech when the court ruled in his favor. In 1953, the magazine added veteran radical Scott Nearing to the magazine's ranks. From that date and for nearly 20 years, Nearing authored a monthly column descriptively entitled World Events. During the Truman and Eisenhower years, a number of left-wing intellectuals found a space for their work in Mr., including a number that would gain in stature in the ensuing liberalized decade, such as pacifist activist Stoughton Lind 1952, historian William Appleman Williams 1952, and sociologist C. Wright Mills 1958. Topic. New Left Era and After 
From the middle years of the 1960s, radical political theory saw a resurgence in association with the emergence of a new left in Europe and North America. Monthly Review grew in stature in tandem with this resurgence. While remaining an intellectual journal not oriented towards acquiring a mass readership, circulation of the publication nonetheless grew throughout this era, approaching 9,100 in 1970 before peaking at 11,500 in 1977, while Mr. remained essentially a publication with roots in the so-called Old Left. It was not unfriendly to the young radical movement which grew in conjunction with the civil rights movement and the opposition to conscription and the Vietnam War. Among those associated with the 1960s New Left published by the Monthly Review were C. Wright Mills, Herbert Marcuse, Todd Gitlin, Carl Oglesby, David Horowitz, and Noam Chomsky. The Monthly Review editorial staff was joined in May 1969 by radical economist Harry Magdoff, replacing Leo Huberman, who had died in 1968. Magdoff, a reader of the publication from its first issue in 1949, bolstered the already well developed third worldist. Orientation of the publication, based upon revolutionary events in Cuba, China, and Vietnam. Certain Maoist influence made itself felt in the content of the publication in this period. Monthly Review became steadily more critical of the Soviet Union in the 1960s and 1970s, with editor Paul Sweezy objecting to the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968 and the suppression of the Polish trade union, Solidarity, through martial law in 1981. In the latter case, Sweezy declared the incident had proved beyond doubt that dot the communist regimes of the Soviet bloc have become the expression and the guardians of a new rigidified hierarchical structure which has nothing in common with the kind of socialist society Marxists have always regarded as the goal of modern working class movements. Despite an apparent decline of the American left in the 1980s, MR's circulation hovered in the 8,000 range throughout the decade. Topic. Publication today Since 2006 John Bellamy Foster has been the sole editor, together with Michael D. Yates, as associate editor, two assistant editors, and an editorial committee. Topic. Political orientation From its first issue, Monthly Review attacked the premise that capitalism was capable of infinite growth through Keynesian macroeconomic fine-tuning. Instead, the magazine's editors and leading writers have remained true to the traditional Marxist perspective that capitalist economies contain internal contradictions which will ultimately lead to their collapse and reconstitution on a new socialist basis. Topics of editorial concern have included poverty, unequal distribution of incomes and wealth, racism, imperialism in relations between economically developed and less developed nations, and inefficiencies in production and distribution seen as endemic to the capitalist system. Although not averse to discussion of esoteric matters of socialist theory, Mr. was generally characterized by an aversion to doctrinaire citations of Marxist canon in favor of the analysis of real-world economic and historical trends. Readability was emphasized and the use of academic jargon discouraged. Editors Huberman and Sweezy argued as early as 1952 that massive and expanding military spending was an integral part of the process of capitalist stabilization, driving corporate profits, bolstering levels of employment, and absorbing surplus production. They argued the illusion of an external military threat was required to sustain this system of priorities in government spending. Consequently, effort was made by the editors to challenge the dominant Cold War paradigm of democracy versus communism. In the material published in the magazine, in its editorial line Monthly Review offered critical support of the Soviet Union during its early years although over time the magazine became increasingly critical of Soviet dedication to socialism in one country and peaceful coexistence, seeing that country as playing a more or less conservative role in a world marked by national revolutionary movements. After the Sino-Soviet split of the 1960s, Sweezy and Huberman soon came to see the People's Republic of China as the actual center of the world revolutionary movement. Monthly Review remained true to an independent orientation throughout its history and never aligned with any specific revolutionary movement or political organization. 
Many of its articles have been written by academics, journalists, and freelance public intellectuals, including Albert Einstein, Tariq Ali, Isabel Allende, Samir Amin, Julian Bond, Marilyn Buck, G. D. H. Cole, Bernardine Dorn, W. E. B. Du Bois, Barbara Ehrenreich, André Gunder Frank, Eduardo Galliano, Che Guevara, Lorraine Hansberry, Edward Herman, Eric Hobbs Baum, Michael Clare, Saul Landau, Michael Parenti, Robert W. McChesney, Ralph Miliband, Marge Piercy, Francis Fox Piven, Adrian Rich, Jean-Paul Sartre, Daniel Singer, E. P. Thompson, Emmanuel Wallerstein, and Raymond Williams. In 2004, Monthly Review editor John Bellamy Foster told The New York Times, The Monthly Review was an as Marxist, but did not hew to the party line or get into sectarian struggles. Non-English editions In addition to the U.S.-based magazine, there are seven sister editions of Monthly Review. They are published in Greece, Turkey, Spain, South Korea, as well as separate English, Hindi, and Bengali editions in India. <laughs> Monthly Review Press Monthly Review Press, an allied endeavor, was launched in 1951 in response to the inability of the maverick left-wing journalist I. F. Stone to otherwise find a publisher for his book The Hidden History of the Korean War. Stone's work, which argued that the still ongoing Korean War was not a case of simple communist military aggression but was rather the product of political isolation, South Korean military buildup, and border provocations, became the first title offered by the Mr. Press in 1952. Titles published by the press in its formative years include The Empire of Oil by Harvey O'Connor, 1955, The Political Economy of Growth by Paul Barron, 1957, The United States, Cuba, and Castro by historian William. William Appleman Williams 1963, Fanchon, A Documentary of Revolution in a Chinese Village by William Hinton 1966, Monopoly Capital by Paul A. Barron and Paul M. Sweezy 1966, The English Translation of Open Veins of Latin America by Eduardo Galliano 1973, An Unequal Development 1976, and Eurocentrism 1989, by Samir Amin, Harry Braverman author of Labor and Monopoly Capital became director of Monthly Review Press in 19 1967. The present director of the press is Michael D. Yates, author of Naming the System. In later years, Monthly Review Press has published such titles as Marx's Ecology by John Bellamy Foster, Discourse on Colonialism by Aimé Césaire, The Great Financial Crisis by Fred Magdoff and John Bellamy Foster, and Biology under the Influence by Richard Lewontin and Richard Levins. Mr. Press is also the U.S. publisher of the Socialist Register, a long-running annual series of topical essays written by radical academics and activists. <laughs> M. R. Zine From 2005 to 2016, Monthly Review published an associated website, M. R. Zine. At its closure, Monthly Review announced that it would maintain an online archive of the site. Topic. Abstracting and indexing According to the Journal Citation Reports, the journal has a 2014 impact factor of 0 0.460, ranking it 107th out of 161 journals in the category, Political Science. Topic. Editors Monthly Review has had six editors listed on its masthead Paul Sweezy, from 1949 to his death in 2004 Leo Huberman from 1949 to his death in 1968 Harry Magdoff from 1969 to his death in 2006 Ellen Makeson's Wood, 1997-2000 Robert W. McChesney, 2000-2004 John Bellamy Foster, May 2000 present. Topic. Footnotes. Topic. Further reading. Paul A. Barron, The Longer View, New York, Monthly Review Press, 1969. Stephen Resnick and Richard Wolff, Rethinking Marxism: Essays for Harry Madgoff and Paul Sweezy. Brooklyn, N.Y., Automedia, 1985. 
Savrin, S., Tonic, E. A., Sweezy, P. M. Interview with Paul M. Sweezy. Monthly Review. 38 11 1. doi 10.14452, Mr. 038-11-1987-04-1. From the Left, Harry Magdoff, A Free Market Failure. New York Times, November 1, 1987. Robert W. McChesney. The Monthly Review Story, 1949-1984. M. R. Zine, June 5, 2007. Atewell, Paul A. Radical Political Economy Since the Sixties, A Sociology of Knowledge Analysis. New Brunswick, N.J., Rutgers University Press. ISBN 0813510538. OCLC 10,230,097. External links Official website Monthly Review Press, Publishing House and Catalog Monthly Review Archives <laughs>